started. GPS and so does that there. So if you push that CDI button, it will now say VLOC. Yeah. And that says VLOC. That's VOR localizer. Oh, right. Now you can use it as a VOR. If you push GPS, it would work as a GPS. This would work as a GPS. It would, yeah. So basically, you know where you put the line in when you do direct two. Yeah. It will tell you the, the the direct track. You could then set the direct track on there, whatever it happens to be, and then the course deviation index would tell you whether you're left or steer less or more. Oh, uh, really? Okay. Oh, okay. Garmin. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Alright, clever. It is. <laughs> Just learning how it all works. This one here is your distance measurement equipment. So you now need to set up Daventry. So on the frequency over here. So 11644. Now, if you want the decimal, push the button in at the front. There you are. Ah. So if you pull it out, it gives you the decimal 5. Yeah. Pushing it in. Right, okay. It's simple things. The distance in here where it says frequency, yeah. you can put it on remote, which gives you the distance, yeah. uh, remote, knots, and minutes. You only use that when you're using the GPS. Yeah. If you put it over here, GS and T, yeah. nautical miles, uh, distance, that's your ground speed, and minutes to run. But for today, we'll just put it in the frequency in the middle. Okay. See that? And there's your distance. Okay. All right. Do you, as part of your PPL, do you learn about mixture leaning? Uh, when we get to above 3,000 feet, we'll do it. I've, not, I've never done it, but I just I don't know. Uh, you won't normally have to do it, but I will show you. Okay. Yep. And so when you in sort of 10 hours' time, and I'm, I'm when you're doing, my test you're, when you're doing your cross country flying, it's only really applicable above 3,000 feet. Yeah. But I'll show you today. Well, we well, we, well, we can lean it out. You just bring it back yep. until you see that on this, this one down here has got the exhaust gas temperature. That needle oh, right. will come up to the red line. Yeah. If that doesn't work, which is not always set, you just bring it back until you feel the engine started to run rough and then push it forward slightly. Because don't forget, fuel is a coolant in the engine. Yes. So when you're climbing, you want full mixture. You want full mixture. Yep. Otherwise, it'll run too hot and things will burn out. Right. Okay. All right. I'll show you that. That will be on the cross country. Yep. Radio Golf Bravo Oscar Romeo Kilo Radio Check one two two one decimal one eight zero and taxi for local flight two on board. Golf Bravo Oscar Romeo Kilo afternoon to you. Your readability five a two seven right hand Q and H one zero one five. Q and H one zero one five two seven right hand uh, Golf Romeo Kilo. Well done. Uh, one zero one five. Good. All clear my side. Yep. Double check that one, yep. Yeah. Alright, with the door open. Oh, yeah, yep. a bit of air conditioning. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And when we come to do your pre test, I shall show you, I shall ask you to check my brakes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I shall, I shall give you all these uh, gems ready for, ready to get ready for test. Oh, I know it works, I've just flown it. How do I test your brakes? No, you can't. You just say to me, oh, can you check your brakes? And I just go, <laughs> yeah, my brakes work as well. Right, okay. Good. That's why you ask the instructor or your examiner. 
and then when you start the turn, just get a good left-hand turn going. Yeah. Decreasing, decreasing, erect, needle left, ball right. Yeah. And then when you can, right turn, increasing, increasing, erect, needle right, ball left. Yep. So you check your instrumentation while you do the turns. Yep. Now because the grass is a bit wet, you can ask for backtrack on the hard if you let you. Got from Mickey, request backtrack on the hard. Yep, so yours. Thank you, got from Mickey. Good. And as you go onto the runway, switch the strobes and the light on. Yep. Is there a particular line I should be following, or is it? No, not really. This is just the centre line of the taxiway. Yep. So yes, when you're coming, but if, if, if we all stay in the middle of the taxiway there, then nobody can get in or out yeah. if you're in the way. So then you want to go left or right. But when you're taxiing down the wrong way, yeah, why would you not go down the middle? Normally these yellow lines, yellow lines are taxi lines. Yeah. But if you go to another airfield, when you go to Cambridge, that's what you're doing. Follow. Follow the yellow line. Oh, is he? Downwind. Oh, okay. I don't know where it is. So there he is in uh, eight and a half eight position. See him just above the creed, just above the clouds. Right over there now. Nine o'clock. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he's going downwind fairly fast, but we'll we'll be out of his way for oh, yeah, well, right, yeah. right. And on the test, is there a particular passenger brief that I need to give to Mike or Simon? No, whoever, so. you'll just have the emergency brief and the emergency brief will be anything that goes wrong on takeoff before 60 knots, I'm going to stop on the runway yep. and I'm going to do that by closing the power and putting the brakes on. If I've just got airborne on runway 27, we know we've got a solar farm at the end of the runway, yep. I don't want to go in there. You can't go left because the solar farm is there, but you can go right because there's a field. Yep. So just after takeoff, I'll turn right and go into the field, and after 400 feet, I will carry out the standard engine fail procedure. Right. If I turn. So this is where you do follow the yellow line. That gives you wingtip clearance over the boards yep. until you get past the line, and then you move left a bit. When you face into wind, which you can see where the wind's coming from, basically face it down the runway best you can, just in case of a failure of the parking brake, then at least it runs across into grass as opposed to the tyres. Yes. Something like that? Absolutely. That's no, common sense, Simon, isn't it, yep. really? At least if we take off notice, we're going to go into the field, not into the tyres, <laughs> which will knacker things up. Uh, power check, park into wind, parking brake on, throttle to 1200. Okay. Fuel change. Engine temperatures in the green. Yep. Oh, 2000 and short brakes are holding. Okay, so good look out. Is yep. it all clear your side, Mike? You tell him? Yeah. Yep. All clear my side. Okay. And as you put the power on, look outside and call out brakes holding. Brakes are holding. If not, we'll set off down the runway. Copy. So small reduction and recovery. Small reduction and recovery. The same small reduction. Recovery. Peas and peas on the green. Good. Slow running about 800, that's the minimum. Trimmers. Ball friction. Mixture fully rich. Magnetos on both. Close to the terminal, final runway. 27, touch and go. Peter, he says required. Unit Romeo, runway vacant, 230, 12 knots. Good one, sure. Lots of drives on, flaps, etc. Quiet one. Good. You're messing up for me. Ah. <laughs> flaps, updates, <laughs> instruments, ah. 2 4. Yeah. Can't be if there's lots of water on the ground, you give it another blast, but you don't need to today because it's dry. Okay, door's now closed and latched. I uh, guess we're going to wait for. Um, That's it, just spin it round and tell me you get round there. I think he'll have probably landed. Oh, there we go. Yes. We're going to get round on this, Tom. Yeah, just about for a bit of break. Beautiful.
possibly oh, do. Yeah, you can get that time. Oh, it comes around on sixpence, yeah. OK, clear on approach, clear on base leg. You know that we're on the runway, but you can now say you're ready for departure. Oh, for me, Kilo, ready for departure. Based on the touching area. Oh, Premier Kilo, runway Sakin, 230, knots. Oh, for me, Kilo. 23015 knots, so 40 degrees off, which means two thirds, because 40, thir 40 degrees put us 40 minutes, two thirds of an hour. Two thirds of the wind is now your crosswind component. Right, okay, so left hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good. Happy? Yep. Okay, toes on the bottom of the pedal, yep. only about half aileron, yep. about there. Okay, off, off we go. So there we are, full power, 2300, that's good. Temperatures okay. and pressures in the green and yep. the speed is already building. Building, yep. And 55 knots, it'll fly. Beautiful. That's it, nicely tracking down the centre line. Fantastic. Very impressive, very good. That's what it's all about. Okay. There's a storm over there, but we'll be on there and find that covers in. So we'll just climb up to 2,500 feet, see if we can do some smooth air. There's a bit of a change, turn left onto heading 180, now we're clear of, of uh, Tail Western Village. That makes it 210 initially. Cross to the Romeo right on way, one way to zero, two seven, touch and go. Stop shooting, Romeo. It's a shame, it's just these showers keep coming through because it's, it's actually a lovely day for flying. Yeah. Really bad. Well, it's a bit when you add that spirit, but we'll probably miss most of that. Yeah. That will glance probably the other side of uh, Brackley with a bit of luck. Good, that's good airmanship. You'll get brownie points for doing that. these little nuggets I will give you just before you do the test yeah. so you'll just go sail through it swimmingly well now that little shower you can see on the left hand side of it you can actually see the through the shower yeah see the horizon so you could go through that bit but the bit in the middle no, it's a bit heavier yeah so <laughs> go around that otherwise you won't see where you're going yeah 2,000 feet, did you say? Uh, 2,500, if, oh, you okay. if we can get to it. OK, we're now leaving the circuit, so fuel pump and landing light can come off. Both off oh. and out. That's it, off. Off. Oh. That's an off, yeah. And that's an off. Yeah, landing light. Yeah. That's it. Turn left heading 150 now, please. There we are, in some smoother air now, that's a bit better. Yeah. Close to the drummer, final 27, touch and go. Julia Romeo, runway's vacant, 220, 12 knots. To the drummer. And turn left on heading 120, please.
That's it. Now, if I can have the map, I'm just going to show you this bit of simulated fire. We went to bring the foggles, but I forgot to do that. Never mind. That's it. Bring the foggles up. Oh, yeah, that that helped. Yeah, bring that help. It doesn't make. It's just not efficient. It, yeah. you, you can fly all day with it. It's just. It's not efficient. That's I just thought the it's nose looked too low. Ah, well, that's what it is. Yeah. You see, that's the reason for it. Now, master instrument. So your selective radio scan goes from there to there to there to there. Periodically look at that. Periodically look at that. Yeah. The dot is on the horizon line, which is going to simulate the, basically the level flight. Yeah. Just put the aircraft into a slight left-hand turn. Notice left wing down, yeah. right wing up, the same as your aeroplane. Yeah. All right. And it can also be shown dignified by the teeth. Yeah. So you can keep the pointer in the middle. That's one way of keeping it in the wing level. Yeah. Or you keep the wings level itself. All right. Now, we'll have to improvise because I forgot to pin the bobbies. Yeah. So we're going to put them up there like that. So you can't see where you're going. <laughs> I'm going to hold that on there. That's it. Just put it on the other one. That goes behind there. It does work because I've done it. Now, a bit, a bit of paper in my. Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. You can't. Don't look over here. Look over there. Right. Okay. Now you're going to basically keep the dot on the horizon, maintain 2,500 feet, and I want you to do a completely 360 degree turn all the way around onto this heading. I got about 2,500. Okay. Or okay. well, you can stay at 2,004. Oh, oh, I don't okay, mind yeah. that. Yeah. I'm quite happy with it. I don't mind. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to limit the bank angle to 15 degrees of bank because that's going to be what we call a rate one turn. Yeah. Rate one turn is 10% of your SB plus seven. So in this particular aircraft, it should be 16 degrees. You can't stay to 16 on there. So call it 15, which is in between the first and second notch. Yeah. Or the aeroplane with the wings level with these dashes, their rate right one turns. Okay. Okay, so try one to the right or the left, whichever you wish. Now I'll go to the left one. Okay. So, so you just do 15 degrees of bank, hold the dot on the horizon, keep the selective radial scan going, and you'll notice the aeroplane is showing a rate right one turn. It's now changing direction at three degrees per second, so it would take two minutes to do a complete 360 degree turn. That's it. So if you inadvertently fly into some shitty weather, can you do a 180 degree turn and come back out of it again? And the answer is, yes you can. You hold the dot on the horizon. Yeah. Keeping the wings at 15 degrees. And you can, you're doing it so well, mate, the heading 240 and roll out. I'm not going to labour the point on this. There's nothing wrong with the radio in Juliet Romeo. Uh, it just sounds a bit, uh, bit whiny, doesn't it? That's it, keep the scan going. So from yeah. there to there to there and all the way around. Heading 240 and you haven't lost any height at all. Is there any point in labouring the point? No, because you can do it. Yeah. It's quite simple. What I am going to do now is I'm going to get you to close your eyes while I fly the aircraft. I'm going to put the aircraft in an unusual attitude. It won't be anything serious, I promise that. But what yeah. I want you to do is speed roll pitch. If the okay. speed is low, you put power on. If the speed is high, you take it off. And then what you're going to do then is roll the wings level for the ailerons and then put the dot back on the horizon. Yep. You happy? Yep. Okay. Where up my shot in the plane. Well, that's it. Now you'll notice when I tell you I put it into a turn, just keep your eyes closed. I'm going to ask yeah. you what you think the aeroplane is doing. So it's like we're banking to the right. Um. Okay, what do you think the aeroplane is doing now? I feel like we're doing a right turn. Okay, well done. Good, it is. And what do you think he's doing now? Possibly a left turn. Okay, have a look out. Right now. <laughs> it's because of the yaw. The yaw screws around the balance in your ear. Ah, uh, okay. You must not take any notice of what your head is telling you, you've got to take a notice of what the instrument is telling you. Yeah. Okay, close your eyes again, I'm going to put it in a funny position, or on a slightly altered position. And I'm now going to say recover. You have control. So, speed. Then roll. And then pitch. No problem at all. And is there any point in labouring it? There isn't. 
can just purely and simply do whatever you need to do to get the thing back in the level flight by putting the dot on the horizon where the wind's level and then controlling the power. Well, I meant to have been doing that without looking out. Oh, absolutely, don't look oh, okay. out. Yeah. Oh, well, I think just, I, I may have looked out. Look. Okay, one. let's do it again then. Yeah. So you've got control, oh, I've got control right there. Right right. Okay, and recover it, please. Oh, that's right. Speed. Roll. And pitch. Once you're all sorted, then of course you can regain level flight. Which is just to put the power back, dot on the horizon, wings level, and you're at 2,000 feet. Perfect. Any great takes of that? Um, None at all. Right. Now, you might know where we are, but we're coming up to a little town down here, and I'd like you to show me, by using the VOR, where we are. So I'm going to fly the aircraft for you. Okay. I'm going to get fly back up to 2,500 feet, but I want you to tell me where that, that, that place is using the VOR. Use this VOR here with number two, which is the number two box, which is this one here. Okay. So before you so use the VOR, we do some checks. What are they if you called? don't know where you are, how do you know which VOR to well, use? Well, you, 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 you'll always you know, know roughly, roughly where, where you are. are. Okay. Well, you should do. Yeah, yeah. So 1164. Okay, so set 116.4. Yeah. Good, so that's the station. Yeah. Now you're going to tune it. It's nav number two, so push nav number two. Turn the volume up. That is DTY. Let's push that, switch it off. How do I know that? I'll tell you that. Okay. Okay. Switch it off. What now to? Yeah. If you look at the bottom of your map, there will be a VOR chart. It will also be on here, I think. All right. Put on in under this bit. Or on the one at the front. No. Uh, oh, okay. At the bottom of the map, you'll find where it will say the Morse code. Is it on here? Yeah, there yeah, it is. Code, yeah. It is. Okay. So da did it is D, then it says da, which is T, and then da did da da, which is Y. D T Y. So that means you can identify it. Right, okay. Okay. Now we rotate, make sure we get no flags, rotate the OBS until it says from, with the course deviation index centered. Oh, that's it. That's sensitive. Keep it going. Turn this way so we're into wind. Rotate it until it says from. There we are, one five zero. So with a pen and your protractor on a bearing of one five zero from Daventry, draw a line. So one eight zero, one five zero. Do you require to go back into the circuit, do you? That's good. Now looking over here, distance measuring equipment, 116.4, it says 11.6 miles, so a thumb plus a little bit. Buckingham. What, what is it is? Can you see? You've now positively identified that that is Buckingham yeah. using a VR. Yeah, I can Fantastic. see the <laughs> I know you knew where it was. Well, I, well, I, I didn't actually. Yeah. <laughs> but what we need to do, because we're always going to ask you to position fix a place over somewhere that we can definitely guarantee what it is. Right. That is Buckingham. It could be Silverstone, it can't be Finber, it could be anywhere. Yeah. Okay, now what I want you to do, on a heading of 240, I now want you to tell me what a bearing is to fly to the beacon, please. So we, what we do, we've done the station tune identify flags, because you've just done it. Yeah. Rotate okay, the OBS until it says 2. Okay. There's the flag. The opposite, that's the one that's five zero, I assume. Yeah. There it is, 3, 3, 2. Yeah. So what are you going to do now? You're going to, to maintain that bearing, I'm going to turn the aircraft onto 332. I'll just do this a little bit, then you're going to take over doing it in a moment. So we just get nicely onto 332, which is round about there. And see what that's telling us to do. Now what's it telling me to do now? Steer right. It is, so what heading do you think we should steer right by? 30 or 40 degrees. So if you take control, yeah. I'll have the map and other bits and pieces. You now need a cut of 30 degrees, so you want to steer heading of about north. 
Or even zero one zero. Using fifteen degrees of bank as a maximum when you run your instruments. Yeah. Hold the heading and you'll see in a moment that that will start to come back into the middle. Yeah, it's quite sensitive that line, isn't it? Yeah. Now, just because of the wind, you might need another 10 degrees. Still 0, 030, 0, just to push it in, but that's the maximum you're going to want. <coughs> and you'll notice as we get towards the radio, it's coming back into the middle. When it gets, <coughs> when it gets into the middle, turn back onto a heading of 330, three, plus or minus a bit for the wind. Yeah. If the wind's from the south, it's almost... It is, absolutely. Almost so it's probably, probably far off. So, so onto 330, three, or 332, or whatever it is. bit for the wind. Absolutely. And now what we're going to try and do is fly that bearing with the feet with the course deviation index telling you whether to go left or less than or more than. So we already I can see it's going left okay. more, so. so what which way are you going to turn? Going north slightly. Now if you go north is that going right less than or more than? Don't forget less is left. Ah okay. Okay. So yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no problem. That's what training's all about. Yeah yeah which is your first time. That's it, so make the heading go back 300 or something like that, yeah. push you back into the middle. Yeah, yeah, that's There's the shower, just hitting Terwestern, but the time we finish, that will have gone through, so we'll come back in from behind it. Notice it's starting to come back in again. Yep. When it gets back into the middle. And it was, that line is already straight through to the middle Absolutely. of the western, which we are. So Fantastic, so now turn. But you wouldn't see that if you know. <laughs> so, well, we're going to do that in a moment. So turn back on the heading of 330, cross a bit for the wind. So I'm guessing 320. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And let's see if that works. And you should find that you'll better get the heading, and you'll better work out from your heading and your track what the drift angle is. Yeah. And you'll find 320 is not going to be far off. This 116.4 yeah. is now counting down. Yeah. Now let's fly it, see if we can get the beacon, and let's have a look what it looks like in the field. Right, slightly, so just turn out. Very good. So you can just keep okay. adjusting. Yeah. But once you've worked out, you roughly will probably find out that 320 is probably not a bad heading. Or even 330, I don't yeah, know. I think whatever it needs, it needs to do. But you, what you're going to do is try and keep that needle in the middle. Look at this, 2,500 feet. Look at where the course deviation is it's going yeah. slightly left. Oh, yeah. So it's there, 320. 3.9 miles away. Wonderful. Now, when we get to within two nautical miles, well, let's see what happens. It gets very sensitive, and you will start when you get close to the beacon. It starts to flick around. The two will go to the flag, yeah. which is one of those. If I can just detune it. Oh, yeah. Two, two 
2.8 miles. Fantastic, good. Quick look at your compass, 300. So as you can see, it just wants to wander around just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Point three miles, so just so it's going slightly right. right then, so yeah. So just maintain the heading of three two zero. Just maintain it. Yeah, because you realise that three two zero was a good heading earlier on. Yeah. To keep the bar in the middle. I'll show you what it looks like when we get over the top of it. I leave the thermal. Yeah. Well, it's a bit of showers and thermals. Yeah. Today. Wait. Oh, good. Within two miles, you just maintain heading. Maintain yeah. heading, yeah. But can you already see it then? Oh, so one mile away. Yeah, I, I shall show you when we get to it. You just keep going until that says 1.1 1 .1 mile, keeping that in the middle, which is what you're doing. And let's see what happens when you fly over the beacon. Now and I shall do a turn, and you'll be able to see it in the field. I'll show you. There we are, 0.6 of a mile now, so you're now very, very close. Just hold it steady. Oh, cool. I can just tune that so you don't cheat. When you get past it, yeah, just hold it. 0.3 of a mile. Changing. There it goes into the flag. Oh, yeah. Cone of confusion. And then in a moment, it will flick to pop. It's now told you, you've just gone over the beacon. Okay, if you make a right-hand turn. Keep the turn going. And if you look down there in the field, you'll see yeah. that little round thing Lots with the chip on uh, it. That is the VOR beacon. <laughs> and they are dotted all over the countryside. Okay, so maintain the heading just for a second. Now, if I wanted to use the radial to get us back to Terre Western, which I showed you we could do early on, we've yeah. already worked out, if you draw a line from Daventry to Terre Western, it's 178. Yeah. So if you turn left now, initially, take me back towards the beacon. But it's okay. Oh. Have we got it? Yeah. The worst of uh, um, Okay. So rotate the OBS until you get a two bearing. Oh. Roger, I'll wait another five minutes and if it still doesn't look very flyable, I'll cancel the flight. Okay then, just keep me in touch. Oh. There it is. So the bearing to steer to the beacon is 205. So steer 205. Now rotate the OBS until you get another bearing to the beacon. Because you're okay, at 1.6 miles, that's it. So you're now yeah. need a heading of 190, one which is what you're steering. Wait until that counts down. That flicks over. But then the bearing you want from the beacon is 178. So wait until it says from. Right, OK. Rain, aren't we? Uh, we'll, we'll stop before we get there. 0.8 of a mile now. Getting close. There comes the flag. I wouldn't too much about that, I thought you get onto the radio. Yeah, the flag, there's the flag, now set 178. On here? Yep. On, uh, That's 170, 175, 178, yeah. now fly the heading of 178 plus or minus the wind. We'll just go into this little bit of shower so you can just experience it. Then we'll come back out of it again. 
So now what's the what's the course deviation the next enemy to do now? Steer. Got it all right. Is it more or less than? More than. More than the right hand side. So yeah. what heading are you gonna steer? Uh 20, 30 more than uh, you want to do about 40 degree cut, so instead so of 180, 220, 220, yeah. Under a little shower, I can see through it, so we'll go on to 220 and we'll pick it up. That's it, hold the heading of 220. Oh, yeah, sorry, Wait until yeah. that comes back into the middle. Yep. And then you'll turn left. Yeah, so only a little one, it's not going to be any problem. Not far off, is it? No, it's not too far. Hold the heading. Notice it's coming back in again now. Yeah, I know. Turn back on to 180 plus or minus the wind. I'm guessing about not 190, 200, something like that. Yeah. That's it. Keep on the instruments. Keep the dot on the horizon. Now this is what real IMC looks like. Yeah. You'll see now why you don't want to go in the cloud until you've got an IMC rating. Because <laughs> you can't see it's something I want to get fairly soon. You will do. Yeah. But it's good. It's just a bit of rain. There's nothing to worry about. And we'll see the ground. And we'll be through it in no time at all. So we'll just persevere with it. Now by keeping that in the middle, when that says 8.2, you'll be look where you are. So keep your selective radial scan going, because if you yeah. don't, you'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh, God. Hold the dot on the horizon. This is why you have to implicitly yeah. trust your instruments rather than looking outside. Uh, so that's, that's it. That's it. Just hold it now. Yeah. We'll be just coming through the edge of the cloud now. Quite smooth through right here. Yeah, it's not too bad. When that says 8.2, with that in the middle, let's see where we are. That's it. So the temptation, of course, is to keep saying, oh, it's going left, that means I'm going to keep doing a turn left. But of course, that's not the case. You just yeah, it's it's just, uh, it means it's less now, than. And now or, well, absolutely. Yeah. You've got this under control. Now on your cross country when we come back from Leicester, believe it or not, Leicester to Tel Weston means going straight over the beacon. So no. when we do the cross country, you can show me on that rather than that. I think I'm doing it on a Saturday, so I don't think I'm doing Leicester. Okay. Oh no, no. Oh, yes, I'm doing Leicester. We are doing Leicester, yeah. Leicester yeah. punching forth and back, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. So now we've just got to steer slightly more around. Cancel and uh, taxi back to the parking stand. Oh, Golf Juliet Romeo, oh, roger that, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day, bye. Hey, you're welcome. Very nicely done, good. That's it. So you're now steering heading of about 190 to yep. nearly keep that in the middle. Each one of those dots represents two degrees, so at the moment you're three degrees left of where I'd like to Get it back in the middle. I suppose the closer you go, the more you have to turn uh, as well. No, that's it. But again, of course, you're getting further away from the beacon, so it's less sensitive. Yeah. Because you're going from as opposed to to it. Yeah. Make sense? Good. Keep the selective radial scan going. Maintain 2,500 feet. Do you know how many touch and goes I've done? I should tell you. That's good. So just maintain the heading, which is you've, you've yeah. computed. Look at this. Beautifully done. 195 is heading 178. Yeah. Brilliant. 2,500 feet. Spot on. 6.3, so we've got 1.9 miles to run. See two Western somewhere in front of us, then, which we do. Just right. that. It does work, doesn't it? <laughs> so now you tracked to the beacon, yep. you tracked from the beacon, and you've used it as a position fix. Yep. Fantastic bit of instrument flying because you just had to go through that cloud. There's cockerel to see. You had to use it. Yep. Yeah, 
it's, it's quite accurate, isn't it? Because it's, it's, but it does that work. line doesn't move. If no. you set that, it, no. it, it will stay. Whatever you, as long as you're getting that on that you know you're. You've, got, you've got to be on it. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, you could also alter that. And then, of course, it's got Daventry. It's got our position going into to Western. EGBL. I don't know where it's got EGBL from. It should be EGBT. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's happened there. <laughs> At 7.5, it's just keep the beetle in the middle. And you'll see 8.2 will take you right over the top. Yeah. Well. Yeah, don't go far away. Yeah. That's 
the only tip I'm going to give you now. Because now when you turn in here, that is going to go down to about 50. Really? You'll see. It is dropping rapidly. <laughs> but you're in a fantastic position now because you're not in a thousand feet, 45 yeah. degrees to the runway. Yeah. All you've got to use is your flaps as required to get on land on the runway. Would you use full flap in a crosswind like this? Or? Not necessarily, if you don't need to. Okay. If you do if you keep high enough, you won't need to. Still feel quite high at the moment. Still feel really high actually. Okay. Don't, don't, go, don't go too far because it will, as soon as you turn into wind, especially if you start putting flaps down, it will come yeah. down like a brick. Confirm me, Kilo, finals for uh, Kitchen Go to, sir. Sorry. Kilo, runway's vacant 240. Good. Hand on the throttle. Uh, Carbon heat cold. Uh, and if you want to use more flap, do so because the wind is not far off down the runway. Yes, absolutely perfect. Just showing off, Captain Court. Very good. You keep showing off. Uh, Fox Golf India Tango Zulu. Hello to you. Oh. Right hand, but ah. That's it. Oh. Resist that temptation yeah. to do that. If you haven't done that, that would have been perfect. Okay, flaps to 25, 20, 10. Away you go. Are we going out? All right, one more time. Yeah. Yeah, Fox Tango Zulu, I've just got one PA28 operating in the circuit, but that'll be fine. Copy, Fox Tango Zulu, I'll uh, call um, with about three miles to run. Fox Tango Zulu, that's brilliant. Beautifully done. Yeah, if you hadn't resisted uh, that, if you hadn't done that, it would have been just perfect. I can see what you wanted to do, <laughs> but if you do it, then of course it will start to sink. Yeah. Now this is a circuit of your own, whatever you want to do. Flapless if you like, that's quite sporting when there's no wind, or when there is wind. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, flaps are broken. That's it, you've just heard the cable go ping <laughs> as I put the flaps away. <laughs> well, you can't stop up there all day. And we will stop on this one because there's an heavier one coming over there. Yeah. You really do find this aeroplane well. I was so glad you came back, Simon. But after you had that bit of a deal, you know, bit of a time off, I thought, oh, what a shame, because you're so close to getting your license. Yeah. But you, you'll get it now. I can't remember where the circuit is, no? <laughs> you just go down the A43, if you like, which is the low-level one, or the inbound one, so that we stay south of Sirisham. Yep. And then this one is downwind to land. Oh, already gone to That's it. If you start your right turn now, level up at a thousand feet. Downwind to land. Copper me, kilo, downwind to land. From kilo, Roger, sir. Can't hear him. Bet he just said Roger? Yeah. Good. Now on this one, you've got no flaps, so don't forget on your base leg. Nothing to slow you down, although apart from you've got wind today. So if necessary, take all the power off. Yeah. You always put it back on again if you need it. Yeah. Uh, brakes on the car. Make sure fuel's, fuel's on. Yeah. This one's carpet. Good. Yeah, oh, so what a nasty little show you just went through there. But it was fairly smooth. Beautifully done. still want to be able to see where you're going, just accept that you're going to come in at 80 knots a bit faster, yeah. but that of course means that you're going to float and you're going to use a bigger runway. Yeah. So if you ever have a problem when you've got no flaps, don't land on a short runway. Go somewhere where there's a long runway. Yeah. This is full stop, isn't it? It's full stop this time, yeah. Yeah, that's, getting, that's quite a nasty one there. We don't want to get soaked, so yeah. we'll, we'll stop. We're coming in, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's just coming in, yeah, it's this way, yeah, unfortunately. Very good. Kilo runway is vacant 250 at uh, 10 knots. Call for me, Kilo 5027 to that. Right yeah, make sure we don't go through the trees. Yeah. Listen, give the birdies a haircut. That's it. I have the nose down. Just accept you then a bit faster. That's all right. No problem. Yeah, 